In the early days of gaming, women were often portrayed as damsels in distress, which is a tiresome trope in varying ways. But then, things started to change with unreleased games in the USA like Baraduke and Sega's Ninja Princess. Ms. Pac-Man will also be very popular all over the world, striking a blow for gender equality and attract women to video games. In the early days of the NES, popular games were Super Mario Bros., Castlevania, and The Legend of Zelda. However, there will be a new game series that will be very popular for all for three decades. That game was Metroid, and the main protagonist is Samus Aran. Samus Aran is often considered an icon for strong female characters in video games before characters like Chun-Li, Sonya Blade, Nina Williams, Ayana Miyama, Maishida Nui, Jill Valentine, Lara Croft, Nariko, and Aloy ever existed. Metroid is a series that rose to popularity on the NES, spawning a sequel on the Game Boy and a third game on the Super NES. After a long while, there were two games on the GameCube, one on the DS, two more games on the Wii, and would make an amazing comeback on the 3DS and on the Switch. Some games were showered with praise, others were scorned. The game series was also used for speedrunning to break time records, and it's still used for such to this day. With all this said and done, this is the history of Metroid. The name of the game Metroid is a combination of two words, Metro and Android. I was meant to allude to the mainly underground setting of the first game as well as its robot-like protagonist. The central figures for the development of the series are Satoru Okada, who directed Metroid and created the series, Yoshio Sakamoto, who acted as a character designer for the first game and has directed or supervised the development of the most subsequent games, Gampei Yokoi, who headed the R&D1 division and produced the first two games. Makoto Kano, who wrote the scenario for Metroid, co-designed the second game and produced the third, and Hiroshi Kiyotake, who designed characters for the original game. Metroid was designed to be a shooting game that combined the platform jumping of Super Mario Bros. with the non-linear exploration of The Legend of Zelda and a darker aesthetic. Halfway through the game's development of the original game, one of the staff said to his fellow developers, Hey, wouldn't that be kind of cool if it turned out that this person inside the suit was a woman? And the idea was accepted. The main inspiration and influence behind the movie is a 1979 blockbuster sci-fi horror film, Alien, directed by Ridley Scott and starring Sigourney Weaver as Ellen Ripley. Ellen Ripley is the main inspiration behind Metroid's protagonist, Samus Aran. One of the main antagonists of the game is called Ridley, named after the director of the first movie, Ridley Scott. The development staff were also influenced by the work of the film's creature designer, H.R. Geiger, finding his style to be fitting for the Metroid universe. Metroid shares many similarities to Alien, such as evolutionary variation of both Metroids and Xenomorphs, the dark and gritty atmospheres, both species having a queen, and the main antagonist, Mother Brain, was named after the main computer of the Nostromo, Mother 6000. In Metroid Fusion, the X parasites will be based on the shape shifting forms of the creatures from the hit 1980s horror film, The Thing. Meanwhile, the AI commanding officer of Samus named Adam is based on HAL 9000 from 2001, A Space Odyssey by acclaimed movie director Stanley Kubrick. The success of the first game spawned a sequel on the Game Boy titled Metroid 2 Return of Samus. After Return of Samus, the series would go to the Super NES with its most successful title, Super Metroid. Nine years after Super Metroid's release, the series would go to the Game Boy Advance with yet another successful title, Metroid Fusion. Although there was no Metroid game for the Nintendo 64, Retro Studios would develop two games for the GameCube, Metroid Prime and Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. The Prime games would not be 2D, but instead a first-person shooter with 3D graphics, new worlds and environments and voice acting as well. 
Metro Prime 3 Corruption will be on the Nintendo Wii and was a major success. The next Wii title will be Metroid Other M, which combined 3D and 2D gameplay elements and was developed by Team Ninja. But unfortunately, it did not receive the same success as Prime 3. Samus was always considered to be a badass female character in video games, but Other M shows a more emotional side of her and so does the prequel E-Manga. The game series would make a comeback by remaking Return of Samus for the Nintendo 3DS titled Metroid Samus Returns, and not too long ago, another successful title taking place after Fusion was released on the Nintendo Switch titled Metroid Dread. Along with the 1997 Konami game Castlevania Symphony of the Night, the early Metroid games defined a subgenre known as Metroidvania. Tom Happ, developer of the 2015 Metroidvania game Axiom Verge, defined Metroidvania games as side-scrolling adventures with continuous maps rather than discrete levels that required the player to collect items and backtrack. Other notable Metroidvania games include Cave Story, Shadow Complex, Ori and the Blind Forest, Hollow Knight, and Chasm. Metroid is an action-adventure video game developed by Nintendo R&D 1 and Intelligent Systems and published by Nintendo. Originally released in Japan on August 6 of 1986 and a year later on the same month in North America. The game was re-released on the Wii Virtual Console on August 2007, 21 years after its original release in Japan and 20 after its North American release. Metroid is a classic action-adventure game that has wowed many gamers all over the world upon its release, and the main character is Samus Aran, who has been protecting the galaxy from hostile alien races long before Duke Nukem, Master Chief, and Isaac Clarke ever existed. However, this game is remembered not only for its gameplay, but for its storyline, difficulty, and so on. In the distant future, Space pirates have attacked a Galactic Federation-owned space vessel and seized samples of Metroid creatures. Dangerous floating organisms, Metroids can latch on any living organism and drain its life energy to kill it. The space pirates plan to replicate Metroids by exposing them to better rays and then use them as biological weapons to destroy anyone who oppose them. Enter bounty hunter Samus Aran who is hired by the Galactic Federation police to destroy the space pirates and wipe out the Metroids before all is lost. Metroid is a side-scrolling sprite rendered 2D action-adventure game. The game takes place on planet Zebes, a large open-ended world with areas connected by doors and elevators. Players take control of Samus Aran as she treks through the planet's caverns and hunting down space pirates. She starts with a weak weapon and the only ability to jump. But as they explore various areas, players find various power-ups missiles, and new types of weapons that can help gamers progress. These power-ups include a Morph Ball, which allows Samus to curl into a ball and roll into tunnels and use a bomb weapon. Other power-ups include High Jump Boots, enabling Samus to jump much higher than earlier, and there's also the Screw Attack, a somersaulting move that destroys enemies in its path. The world of Planet Sabus is comprised of five different levels, Brinstar, Crate's Lair, Norfair, Ridley's Lair, and finally Turian. Brinstar is the cavernous area of Zabis where you obtain the long beam, missiles, energy tanks, and ice beam. To progress further in order to get to Turian, you must defeat the two bosses, Crate and Ridley. Crate's Lair is located in the depths of Brinstar, and Ridley's Lair in the depths of Norfair. Norfair is the lava world of Sabus, and finally to Rien, near the planet's core, is where the final boss is, Mother Brain. After the success of platforming games such as Donkey Kong, Super Mario Bros., Ice Climber, and also the adventure game The Legend of Zelda, Nintendo started to plan an action game. The game was dubbed Metroid, a portmanteau of words like Metroid and Android. Gunpei Yokoi was the game's producer and the game 
was developed by Nintendo Research and Development One and Intelligent Systems. After defeating Mother Brain, the player is given an end screen based on the time it took them to get there. Metroid is one of the first games to contain f multiple endings with five in total. In the third, fourth, and fifth endings, Samus Aran appears without her suit, and for the first time in the best ending, Samus re reveals herself to be a woman. The instruction manual of the NES referred to Samus with he pronouns, but gamers were shocked at the ending when Samus was revealed to be a woman. This was an iconic moment in gaming history and struck a blow for gender equality, proving that even women can be major ass kickers as well. Yes, they can! Hirokazu Tanaka was the game's composer and so many players remember the main theme of the game, how it went from creepy to heroic. The Brinstar theme was so memorable that it received rearrangements in games such as Super Smash Bros. series, Metroid Prime, and so on. The game sound effects were top-notch, but some of them were a little cheesy. The difference between the Japanese and American versions is this. The Famicom version had a saving system. As for the American version, it had a password system. Whenever players were killed, a password would appear so that they can write it down and try again the next time that they play. Players will remember the secret passwords that allowed them to play as Zero Suit Samus or Invincible with a screw attack and unlimited supply of missiles with a morph ball and bombs as well. To play as Zero Suit Samus, the password was Justin Bailey and below the name, Dashes. At, for all the upgrades, unlimited missiles and invincibility, Narpa Sword plus multiple zero digits. The name Justin Bailey comes from the password, which allows players to immediately play Samus without her suit on, but still grants her the same abilities and damage reduction as if she were wearing her suit. Along with a graphical charge, the password starts Samus in Norfair with 5 energy tanks, 255 missiles, the Varia suit, the high jump boots, screw attack, and a wave beam. Kraid and Ridley are defeated, and the path to Turian is opened, however, she must still find the Ice Beam as the password does not give it and the beam is required to defeat the Metroid Larvae in Turian. There are many false theories regarding the password. For example, Justin Bailey was originally thought to be one of the creators of the game, but no such name appears in the game credits. It was also often said that the Justin Bailey code was a reference to an English or Australian term for a bathing suit. Bathing suits were, according to this rumor, refer to as Bailey's, so Justin Bailey will be more accurately rendered as just in a Bailey, which is what Samus appears to wear when the coat is used. However, Samus' outfit with this coat is a leotard, not a bathing suit, and Bailey is not actually slang for bathing suit anywhere in the world. As for the password, Narpa Sword, there have been plenty of debates on what the password stands for. Some players believe it refers to a Narpus sword. Narpus sword, or possibly even Narpas's word. Others feel that the password is properly read as NAR password, with several suggestions having been offered for the meaning of NAR, an abbreviation for the name of the person who handled the conversion from the Famicom disk system and designed the password system, an acronym for North American Release, or an acronym for Not A Real As In Not A Real Password. Metroid 2 Return of Samus is the sequel to the original Metroid for the Game Boy. Released in October 10, 1992, this game is considered to be one of the less remembered Metroid games and not the most praised of all the games. However, there are so many who liked it despite what those who were not so fond of it say. And a fun fact is, in this Metroid 2 commercial, David Warner provided the voice of the narrator 
for the commercial. It's only on Game Boy. The future is in your hands. Samus Aran has been hunting Metroid and Space Pirates for a time, and she is always called to action whenever there is a problem. With the Metroid screwing as a threat to galactic civilization, Samus is called to action once again. Her mission? To eradicate all Metroid organisms on her home planet, SR388. Now, she heads to the caverns below and she finds more lethal creatures and Metroids than the previous ones she encountered. Players once again take the role of Samus Aran. In this game, they must roam throughout the cavernous volcanic region of SR388 and destroy 34 Metroids. The game introduced five new kinds of Metroids. Alpha, Gamma, Zeta, Omega, and the Metroid Queen. Upon going deeper into the caves of SR388, players will encounter different evolutionary kinds of Metroids. The Queen is the final boss of the game and considered to be a very tough boss. Players can aim up and also aim down while they're in the air. They can use a number of missiles and get them all over the areas of the planet. They can also get about 5 energy tanks. There are also beam upgrades such as Ice, Spacer, Wave, and Plasma. The Spacer and Plasma beams were introduced in this game. Other techniques that were introduced in this game were the Spring Ball, the Spider Ball, and also the Space Jump. Battling the Alpha, Gamma, Zeta, and Omega Metroids will be a test of the player's abilities before they can fight the Queen herself. 24 years later, Metroid will have a fan-made remake created by Argentinian developer Milton Guasti. The fan-made remake is titled AM2R, which features new places, new kinds of bosses aside from the different evolutionary kind of Metroids, and so on. The gameplay was similar to Metroid Zero Mission and with color, visuals, and graphics similar to Super Metroid. However, Nintendo sent DMCA notices to websites hosting the game including the official blog and the Metroid database, forcing the removal and halting the development of future updates from Guasti. Despite this, the game is still available through torrents and continues to receive community-made updates. Super Metroid was released in Japan on March of 1994 and then on April of that same year. The classic Metroid game came to American soil. This is the third installment and yet most successful Metroid game in the series. The game would often have hacks and mods years later by many fans, not to forget that this game was also used for speedrunning so that players can test their skills and to break certain world records. Taking place after Metroid 2, Return of Samus, the galaxy seems to be in the brink of peace and citizens are secure that under the watchful eye of bounty hunter Samus Aran, there is nothing to fear from the space pirates. When Samus Aran escapes from SR388, she encounters a baby Metroid known as the Hatchling. She takes it to the Sarah Space Station for the scientists to study. The Hatchling was meant to be a ray of hope for galactic civilization but that light immediately falls into darkness. When Samus leaves, she picks up a distress signal, discovering that the colony is under attack. When returning to investigate, she encounters Ridley, who has resurrected since her last battle. He steals the hatchling and destroys the colony, and Samus quickly flies following him to her old home, Planet Sabus. So Samus must get the hatchling back before the resurrected space pirate force use the hatchling for their own evil purposes. Players could take control of Samus Aran. They started the space colony where they encounter Ridley and then escape from the colony. After that, they get to Planet Sebus to fight Samus, returning and vengeful enemies. Planet Sebus has new areas in the game such as the wrecked ship and their underwater caves of Meridia. On the planet, players will find all kinds of weapons such as missiles, super missiles, power bombs, and gun upgrades. They can also learn secret techniques with the gun upgrades combined with a power bomb and also 
the famous but hard to perform technique known as the crystal flash. In order to perform the crystal flash, players had to select power bombs and Samus must have 50 or less energy, empty reserve tanks, and at least 10 missiles, 10 super missiles, and 11 power bombs. Samus must enter morph ball form and spend one power bomb. At the end of the power bomb's explosion, if the player is holding the aim up button, aim down button, down, fire button, Samus will initiate the crystal flash. This will sort and Samus rising into the air in a ball of light suitless while her energy tanks rapidly refill. Introduced to this game are energy reserve tanks. These tanks are filled with every regeneration sphere Samus obtained to disrupt by destroy enemies. When Samus's energy is completely depleted, the reserve tanks will automatically heal her. There are only four of them scattered in different parts of Zabes. Players can vary the controls depending on how they feel comfortable playing with. There are also special control performances such as the moonwalk, hold down the shooting button, and while going backwards, players would see Samus unleash her inner Michael Jackson. Players can aim and shoot in eight different directions. They can sprint, wall jump, and so on. Speedrunners also use a special morph ball technique known as the mock ball. In which players sprint, then timing their landings, they morph into a ball where they can go faster than its normal speed. Many use the mock ball to obtain the super missile and energy reserve tank earlier. Characters in the game were sprite rendered at those times, and the 2D action gameplay was priceless. Backgrounds in the game were pretty awesome in Zabbis and in the Space Colony. After Super Metroid, many fans were eagerly awaiting a sequel. It was supposedly slated for the Nintendo 64, but while the game was referenced several times, it never entered production because it couldn't come out with any concrete ideas. Many feared that the series was over and there were no more Metroid games. Metroid co-creator Yoshio Sakamoto said that he could not imagine how the N64 controller could be used to control Samus. Nintendo approached another company to make an N64 Metroid, but the offer was declined, supposedly because the developers thought they could not equal Super Metroid. But players rejoiced when Samus Aran was a playable character in the 1999 fighting game Super Smash Bros. Metroid Fusion is a direct sequel to the perfectly successful Super Metroid. Metroid Fusion was released on November 2002 in North America, then released in Valentine's Day 2003 in Japan. The game was given global acclaim after its release featuring enhanced graphics, a new storyline, new enemies, and a new gameplay as well. Metroid Fusion also introduces a non-playable cybernetic entity called Adam, who provides Samus with specific objectives, thus making sequence breaking and free exploration nearly impossible until the end game. Sometime after the events in Super Metroid, Samus Aran is called by the Biologic Space Laboratories to investigate new readings in SR388, Homeworld of the Metroids, where the events of Metroid 2 Return of Samus took place. While escorting Marines into the caves, she encounters a lethal creature, which after destroying it, a parasite comes out and sticks itself to Samus's body. When she loses consciousness, she is taken by paramedics after her ship crashes launching her escape pod. However, thanks to the vaccine which was extracted from the last Metroid, she was saved from certain death, but she suffered a physical change during the operation. She heads to the BSL station and finds it deserted and the parasite known as the X have invaded it. However, there is something far more dangerous behind this attack and it is up to Samus Aran to save the galaxy once again. Only this time, her real enemy is... herself. Players start at the beginning of the station where they are briefed frequently by a computer in which Samus called Adam after her former CEO, whom she respected and saw as a human father figure. 
Players have to cross six different sectors of the station while getting upgrades and also avoiding a new threat known as the SAX. Normal missiles can be upgraded from super missiles to charge missiles. Some of the techniques from Super Metroid, in which was wise of the developers to do so, return. Much like previous titles, can players can aim and shoot in eight different directions. New gameplay features involve climbing up ledges. While jumping, players can perform techniques such as wall jumps. Metroid Fusion continues in its 2D action gameplay while in Prime series you can see some 3D action, but in first person mode. The game's unique visual looks and effects are very astounding as much as Super Metroid's look. Previous titles had an atmosphere of suspense action. Metroid Fusion will have players experience the meaning of fear as they are being stalked and chased by a powerful copy of Samus known as the SAX. The SAX is a creature mimicking Samus' movements and abilities. If players encountered it in some parts of the game, they had no choice but to run for their lives. The only time they would fight the SAX head-on was in the final parts of the game. Another interesting fact is that the cybernetic CO named Adam is a reference to the antagonistic computer AI HAL 9000 from Stanley Kubrick's award-winning blockbuster movie, 2001 A Space Odyssey. The X are based on the hostile alien creatures from the 1982 movie The Thing, starring Kurt Russell. And finally, Samus' former CO Adam Malkovich shares his last name with Academy Award-winning actor John Malkovich. After the success of Metroid Prime and Metroid Fusion, one of the developers for Fusion suggested that Super Metroid be ported to the Game Boy Advance. However, Sakamoto decided to port the original Metroid instead. The development team decided to return to the roots of Metroid gameplay by creating a game based on the NES original. Sakamoto, knowing that Fusion's gameplay and structure were drastically different from previous games, wanted to show people who had never played a Metroid game prior to Fusion the roots of the franchise. That this is what Metroid is. This is the style of gameplay that Metroid sprang from, at the same time retelled the story of Samus's original mission. And that game was Metroid Zero Mission. And the game was originally released on February 9, 2004 on the Game Boy Advance in North America. It has a more expanded story of Samus Aran's first mission in Planet Zabus, where evil haunts the caverns below. Metroid Zero Mission has now an even more challenging gameplay since players can choose any difficulty depending on how good they are. Samus has now some of the abilities and weapons that are seen in games like Super Metroid and Metroid 2, such as the Charge Shot, Speed Booster, Power Bomb, Super Missiles, Space Jump, and so on. There are also many new areas to explore, and so is old ones from old games. When players complete the game, they can play the classic Metroid by selecting Options and Classic Metroid. The classic game is 10 times harder compared to Serial Mission, as old school gamers know. Other gameplay features include Samus' climbing up a ledge once players obtain her power grip. Throughout the game, Samus can find unknown items which are not used at first, but open the path to new areas. In the second half of the game, players must infiltrate the Space Pirate's mothership without Samus' power suit. Players must rely on stealth as Samus' emergency pistol freezes enemies for a very short period of time in order to get into Chosodia and obtain the brand new power suit. The purpose of the game is to take the role of Samus Aran and guide her throughout the cavernous areas and the surface of Zabis in the beginning, battling many enemies on the way, as well as new mini-bosses as well, before the respective bosses of Norfair and Brinstar. Then in Turian, players face with Mother Brain, and after defeating her, they go to another area in Zabis. The music from the original game has been modified and very improved. If Gunpei Yokoi was still alive, 
he will be more than excited to hear this and see this game remade. Samus theme is now modified, and so is the many underground worlds of Samus, such as Craig's World, Ridley's World, and also hearing music from the Criteria area of Super Metroid. With the arrival of consoles like the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and Nintendo GameCube, video games were evolving with advanced graphics. Many fans had rejoiced to hear the news about a brand new Metroid game after the series' absence from the Nintendo 64. The game was called Metroid Prime, developed by Retro Studios and published by Nintendo. Unlike different titles in the series, Metroid Prime will go from 2D to 3D rendered graphics, and the game will be a first-person shooter. Metroid, being a first-person shooter, will be embraced by many fans. However, there were a few fans who were not too fond of the series going from 2D to 3D first-person shooter. Upon its release on November 18, 2002, Metroid Prime demolished all expectations, selling over 2.8 million units worldwide. The game also won multiple Game of the Year awards and is regarded by many critics and gamers to be one of the greatest video games ever made remaining one of the highest rated games on Metacritic. In 2009, an enhanced version was released for the Wii as a standalone game in Japan and as part of the Metroid Prime Trilogy compilation internationally. The Prime Trilogy story bridges the gap between Metroid and Metroid 2. Metroid Prime's story takes place in the planet of Talon 4, where Samus Aran faces off against the space pirates and their biological experiments. She explores the planet and discovers Chozo ruins. She also learns that the Chozo of the planet have been killed by something called the Great Poison, designated as Phazon by the Space Pirates, that originated from a meteor that impacted on the planet many years ago. Samus must recover her lost abilities, confront a familiar foe, and stop the threat of the Phazon. Unlike previous titles, Metroid Prime is a 3D action-adventure game played from a first-person perspective and third-person elements are displayed when Samus morphs into a ball. The gameplay involves solving puzzles to reveal secrets, platform jumping, and shooting foes with the help of a lock-on mechanism that allows circle strafing while staying aimed at the enemy. Samus must travel through the world of Talon 4 searching for 12 Choso artifacts that will open the path to the face on Meteor Impact Crater while collecting power-ups that let her reach new areas. The Varus Suit, for example, protects Samus' armor against high temperatures, allowing her to enter volcanic regions. Some items are obtained after boss fights. Items must be collected in a specific order. For example, players cannot access certain areas until they find a certain beam to open doors or discover new ordnance with which to beat bosses. New gameplay elements include using Samus' visor which had a heads-up display, or the HUD. The heads-up display, which simulates the inside of Samus' helmet, features a radar display, a map, ammunition for missiles, a health meter, a danger meter for negotiating hazardous landscape or materials, and a health bar and name display for bosses. The display can be altered by exchanging visors, one uses a thermal imaging, another has x-ray vision, and another features a scanner that searches for enemy weaknesses and interfaces with mechanisms such as force fields and elevators. The game introduces a hint system that provides the player with clues about ways to progress throughout the game. Players can gain two features by connecting Prime with Metroid Fusion using the GameCube Game Boy Advance Link cable, cosmetic use, of the Fusion suit that Samus wears in Fusion and the ability to play the original Metroid game. Metroid Prime was a collaboration between Nintendo EAD and R&D1 and the American company Retro Studios. Retro was created in 1998 by an alliance between Nintendo and Iguana Entertainment founder Jeff Spangenberg. The studio will create games for the forthcoming GameCube targeted at a mature demographic. 
After establishing its offices in Austin, Texas in 1999, Retro worked on four GameCube projects. When Miyamoto visited Retro in 2000, he suggested a new Metroid game after seeing their prototype first-person shooter engine. In 2000 and early 2001, four games in development at Retro were cancelled, including an RPG, Raven Blade, leaving Prime the only game in development. During the last nine months of development, Retro staff worked 80 to 100 hour weeks to reach Nintendo's deadline, as according to senior artist James Dargy, I think it took us almost six months to do the first level that Nintendo approved. Then we had less than a year to do the rest of the game. Metroid Prime 2 Echoes is the sequel to Metroid Prime, released on November 15, 2004 on a Nintendo GameCube in the USA. Like the previous title, the game was developed by Retro Studios and published by Nintendo. Retro Studios sought to differentiate the game from its predecessor by heavily focusing on storytelling and adding new gameplay mechanics and elements. Metro Prime 2 Echoes is the first game in the Prime series and overall to introduce multiplayer, but it was not very well received compared to the single player mode, which was acclaimed by critics and fans. Since its release, Echoes has received several video game industry awards, as well as spots on top games list by Nintendo Power and IGN. Over 800,000 copies of the game were sold worldwide. In 2009, an enhanced version was released for the Wii as a standalone game in Japan as part of the Metroid Prime Trilogy internationally. The story of Metroid Prime 2 takes place in shortly after Metroid Prime. In this game, Samus is on a mission to rescue Galactic Federation Marines from a ship near Aether, a planet inhabited by a race known as the Luminoth. She discovers that the troops were slaughtered by the Ing, a hostile race that came from an alternate dimension of Aether. Samus must travel to four temples to ensure the destruction of the Ing, while battling the Ing, wild creatures, space pirates, and her mysterious doppelganger, Dark Samus. Much like its predecessor, Metroid Prime 2 Echoes is a first-person shooter that takes place in an open world with interconnected regions. Gameplay involves solving puzzles to uncover secrets, platform jumping, and shooting enemies. Progress requires both dimensions to be explored, using power-ups that Samus acquires over time. Equipment players collect include the screw attack, which allows Samus to somersault in mid-air and off certain surfaces, and a new beam weapons that have limited ammunition. The HUD simulates the inside of Samus' helmet and features a radar, map, missile ammunition meter, and health meter. Several visors are available, and each of them performs different functions. One of them scans enemy weaknesses, another interfaces with mechanisms and elevators and retrieves text entries, another visor reveal and highlight interdimensional objects or cloaked enemies, and create a visual representation of sound. Echoes Features the parallel dimensions Light Aether and Dark Aether. Changes in either dimension often reflect changes in the other. Although the maps in both dimensions have the same general layout, rooms often vary in their designs, creatures, and objects. Dark Aether's atmosphere is caustic and damages Samus' power suit, requiring the player to move between save zones that allow Samus' health to slowly regenerate. Save zones are either permanent or need to be activated by firing certain beam weapons at force field generators. Power suit upgrades can reduce or nullify the damages caused by Dark Aether's atmosphere. Metroid Prime 2 Echoes also includes multiplayer in which four players can play in different stages and engage in combat split into four screens. It has six arenas and two modes, Deathmatch, in which players attempt to kill their opponents as many times as possible within a set amount of time and Bounty, which focuses on collecting coins that injured characters drop. Multiplayer in Echoes features the same control scheme as the single player mode, including the lock-on system for circle strafing while targeting. Many criticized the multiplayer mode as some reviews believed it was not necessary to begin with, that it was better as a single player. Metro Prime 2 Echoes received critical acclaim and it is considered as one of the best GameCube games ever made. 
Some criticize the game for its unforgiving difficulty, and some believe that the graphics were too blurry. But still, it was greatly praised. However, the Prime series was not the only one on GameCube as it had installment on a Nintendo DS. That game was Metroid Prime Hunters, which was released on March 2006. The game was developed by Nintendo Software Technology and published by Nintendo. The story takes place in between the events of Metroid Prime and Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. Players assume the role of series protagonist Samus Aran, who investigate a mysterious message that originated from the Alembic Cluster and comes into contact with a legion of bounty hunters. Gameplay elements involve traveling to different planets on Samus' gunship, which is a concept later used in Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. Players can also play in multiplayer using Wi-Fi connection and voice chat as well. However, the game differs from its predecessors with the removal of assisted aiming, more action-oriented gameplay, and the inclusion of an online multiplayer mode. The player controls Samus Aran, who is equipped with a power suit that allows her to access her gunship from anywhere. She can scan almost any object in the game. The gunship will return relevant information retrieved from its database. An arm cannon is attached to the power suit, which she uses to attack enemies. To enter small tunnels, Samus can roll into a morph ball, an alternative form of the power suit that increases her size substantially. In this form, she is given an unlimited supply of bombs, but is only allowed to use three at a time. She can use the bombs to defend herself and destroy small objects. Criticism was generally favorable, but what was criticized was the style of gameplay, which involved the use of DS's stylus for the lower screen of the handheld game. Metro Prime 3 Corruption was released on August 27, 2007 on the Nintendo Wii. This is the third installment in the Metroid Prime series, and yet the best one out there. This is one of the best games that has been released on the Nintendo Wii. This game continues Samus Aran's adventures and fighting against the Faceon threat and also features a return of a vengeful Dark Samus. This game has featured new and improved graphics, new characters, and voice acting, except that Samus still does not verbally talk onto Metro Other M. Like in its predecessors, all you could hear is her grunts and screaming. Taking place after Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, Samus returns to the Galactic Federation headquarters. There, she receives a briefing from her superiors that a computer unit known as the Aurora Unit was malfunctioning and infected by the space pirates with a virus. However, the pirates attack the Federation and Samus along with bounty hunters such as Gore, Rundus, and Gandreda must retake the base and defeat returning foes from the past. However, things will come soon to light. Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, like its predecessors, is a 3D first-person shooter game. Players would use the Nintendo Wii Nuncha controller. With a Wii remote, you can aim Samus' arm cannon while moving with a joystick. You can shoot with an A button and jump with a B button. The game also features various visors, including the new command visor, which is used to command your ship to land, carry an object, or simply bomb your enemies and walls to reveal secret areas. X-Ray Visor is featured in Metroid Prime, but was removed in the second Prime game, makes a reappearance and can be used in conjunction with a new beam with the ability to fire through certain walls. The Scan Visor is also reintroduced. Visors can be switched easily by holding the minus button and flicking in a direction with a Wii Remote. There are also returning techniques such as a Screw Attack, the Spider Ball, and so on. There is a new type of beam known as the Nova Beam. Missiles can be upgraded to Freeze and Seeker Missiles. This game introduces the PED suit, in which it would be used to change into Hyper Mode and use face on shots and techniques as well. But if you use it for far too long, Samus will be infected and the game will be over. Players first start at the Galactic Federation where they must defend it from the pirates. After that, they go to planet Norian and defend the remaining forces of the GF there. After that, 
Once again, players would travel to different planets and space stations to destroy Face on Threat, and the pirates as well. At E3 2006, the game looked very similar to its predecessor, but Retro Studios said that it would have much more finished look, and they succeeded. This is one of the first Metroid games to include voice acting characters, but Samus can't even fully talk. Retro Studios intended to give Metroid Prime 3 Corruption larger environments than Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, including open world features and enable the game to run at 60 frames per second. There were also plans to have more interactive sequences involving Samus' ship. However, when Retro learned of the Wii's technical specifications, they found the system was less powerful than they had to anticipated and had to scale back on these plans. The developers were also interested in using the Wii Connect 24 feature to provide additional content for the game that would be accessible from the internet. Retro announced that Corruption will be the final chapter of the Prime series and will have a plot about closure told against the backdrop of an epic struggle. After the Wii Remote was revealed, Nintendo demonstrated how Metro Prime 3 would take advantage of the controller's special abilities with a version of Echoes modified for the Wii and shown at the Tokyo Game Show in 2005. At the media summit held by Nintendo during the week of May 21, 2007, Nintendo of America President Reggie Fils Aime said that Metroid games never played this way before, when referring to corruption. He also noted that Nintendo employees who had seen the game in action claimed that it would reinvent the control scheme for a first-person shooter. Metroid Prime 3 Corruption demolished all expectations upon its release. Nintendo Power commented, the stunning visuals and immersive gameplay of the finale to the Prime series proves that the Wii is ready for the mainstream gamer. IGN awarded the game an Editor's Choice Award, and noted that the game was beautifully designed and the best looking game for the Wii. They also praised the inclusion of well done voice acting, in contrast to lack of any voice acting in most other Nintendo games. Despite stating that Metroid Prime 3 was too similar to its predecessors, the review concluded that it was the best game in the Prime trilogy. IGN also said that it could be worthy of the same score as the original Metroid Prime had it not been for the aforementioned reason. X-Play claimed that the game was enjoyable but it had few awkward control mechanics and was a little difficult to control on the Wii. They also said that although it was fun, there were problems that led to odd lock-on mechanics and painful risks from continuous motions. Nine years later, Metroid Prime will return on the 3DS with a new game taking place after Metroid Prime 3 Corruption that game was Metroid Prime Federation Force. Federation Force was developed by Next Level Games and published by Nintendo. Taking place after the events of Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, players assumed the role of Galactic Federation Marines attempting to thwart the continuing advances of the Space Pirates after Samus Aran eradicated the deadly face-on mutagen. The gameplay places a greater emphasis on the shooting mechanics and multiplayer similar to its handled predecessor Metroid Prime Hunters, I'll beg with cooperation instead of competition. It also includes a competitive soccer-based game mode known as Metroid Prime Blast Ball. Federation Force's announcement was met with a largely negative reception from fans due to the game bearing very little resemblance to previous entries in the Metroid franchise. The game was derided for further for its poor timing as it was a spin-off title that was announced when the series had been on hiatus since the controversial Metroid Other M. Upon release, the game was mixed with a critical reception. Nintendo announced Metroid Prime 4 during their E3 2017 broadcast. Shortly after the announcement, Bill Trinan, Director of Product Marketing at Nintendo of America, confirmed that Metroid Prime 4 would involve Metroid producer Kensuke Tanabe but not Retro Studios, which had developed the previous Metroid Prime games. While not confirmed by Nintendo, Eurogamer reported that Prime 4 was being developed by Bandai Namco Studios of Japan in Singapore. The Bandai Singapore staff included former LucasArts staff who had worked on the cancelled Star Wars 1313. Although announced in 2017, there have been talks about the game being still in development. No further news yet have been announced for a fourth title in the Prime series, and no trailers, as of yet, 
unfortunately. Originally released in America on August 31st, 2010, Metroid Other M was developed by Team Ninja and published by Nintendo. This game is a 3D action adventure game which features a new plot, new gameplay, and more challenging quests since its predecessors. Metroid Other M was announced at E3 2009. The game's story mainly takes place between the end of Super Metroid and Metroid Fusion. This game was met with mixed to positive reviews, except that G4 took a harsher approach at the game. Metroid Other M is a return to its NES, Game Boy, and Super NES roots in terms of gameplay, but many felt that this game was more story driven than gameplay driven. In this game, we finally get to hear Samus have a dialogue. She is voiced by Jessica Martin in this game, and we get to see a more emotional side of the heroine. Shortly after the end of Super Metroid, Samus awakens in a medical lab at HQ wearing her Zero Suit, dreaming about her final battle with Mother Brain, the death of the Hatchling, and the complete destruction of Planet Zabbis. She enters a training sequence as directed by a head quarantine officer. After training, she reports the destruction of Zabbis and the complete annihilation of the space pirates and Metroids. Sometime later, she receives a distress signal codenamed Baby's Cry from a derelict bottle ship. Shortly after landing, she reunites with an old friend, Anthony Higgs, and her former commanding officer, Adam Malkovich, leading a platoon for a search and rescue. Though being an outsider, she decides to help, and soon there will be horrifying secrets to encounter. Samus does not collect power-ups like in previous games, neither she can heal by energy balls nor restore ammo by taking missiles and bombs from enemies. Instead, players have to aim the control up and press down the A button to recharge missiles and energy when they're near death. This is called concentration. Samus power-ups are only usable when authorized by Adam. Some new power-ups, such as Axel Charge, can upgrade the speed time for Samus to charge her shot, missiles, and power bombs. E-tanks can also help in recharging energy whenever she's near death. Another new item is the diffusion beam, similar to the diffusion missile in Metroid Fusion. The gravity suit appears, but it does not alter the suit's color. Instead, a purple glow surrounds it. Samus also learns how to dodge with a dodge move, which is useful. This is the first Metroid game to introduce melee attacks when enemies get up close and personal. Metroid Other M is a three-dimensional game and also when facing the Wii Remote to the front, players can change to a first-person view and it can be used strategically. Players first start in the main sector encountering Samus' friends and CO. When they split, they head through three different sectors of the ship. Biosphere, the botanical area which is also a lush tropical region. Cryosphere, an arctic environment and Pyrosphere, a lava field area. The special weapons can only be used when Adam authorizes it. In this game, your enemies will no longer drop health and ammo when they are destroyed. You will take missions throughout the three sectors of the ship, Biosphere, Cryosphere, and Pyrosphere. You will encounter many enemies, old and new, new bosses, as well as some returning vengeful foes from the previous games. The 3D graphics were amazing and the characters looked realistic. Samus looked very cool in this game. The design was also creative and everything was well done. The ship looked exactly like the same like in Super Metroid. The visor was green colored and the ship's body was yellow colored. The characters rendered in 3D were amazing as well. Despite reviews being favorable, many heavily criticized the script, dialogue, and lengthy cutscenes. Others will also criticize the controls being too clunky. After Metroid Other M, the game series will go on a long hiatus until its return to the Nintendo 3DS with a brand new title, Metroid Samus Returns.
Metroid Samus Returns is a 3DS video game developed by Nintendo EPD and Mercury Steam and published by Nintendo for the Nintendo 3DS handheld game console. This game is a remake of the 1991 Game Boy title Return of Samus. It features the same plot but with new visuals, new controls, new gameplay elements, and features a more extended storyline. The original game was a 2D side-scroller, but this game is displayed in 2.5D perspective. While Samus could aim in 8 different places in the original game, she can now aim in any angle in this game. Samus also has a selection of new powers called Aeon abilities that rely on an energy gauge for their usage. One example of an Aeon ability is the Scan Pulse, which lets Samus scan the surrounding environment for hidden pathways and items. The game also features teleport stations, allowing Samus to fast travel between areas. Several abilities introduced after Metroid 2 are implemented in Samus Returns, such as a grapple beam, power bombs, and super missiles. Samus can also perform a melee counterattack when enemies come up, close and personal for heavy damage. Samus Returns also features support for the Amiibo, with compatible figurines being based on the Metroid series. When scanned, players can unlock reserve tanks and a Metroid marker, which can be used to locate nearby Metroids. After the player finishes the game at least once, certain Amiibo exclusive content is unlocked, such as content includes a Metroid 2 art gallery, a Samus Returns art gallery, and a sound test and fusion mode, an extra hard difficulty setting which also features Samus's fusion suit. A standard heart mode is also unlocked upon completing the game, but it does not require an amiibo figuring. The game's development began in 2015 when Sakamoto had expressed interest in making a new 2D Metroid game, which had not been done since Metroid Zero Mission. After hearing that Maker East Steam, following their involvement with Castlevania Lords of Shadow, Mirror of Fate, were interested in taking on the challenge of remaking a Metroid game, he visited their studio to organize a collaboration. Mercury Steam specifically pitched Nintendo a remake of Metroid Fusion, but Sakamoto instead wanted to re recreate Metroid 2. Although Sakamoto had never worked on the original Game Boy game, he believed it to be an important entry in the Metroid series, particularly regarding its plot point of Samus encountering the last Metroid, and so he was enthusiastic about remaking it. The Nintendo 3DS was Sakamoto's platform of choice to employ the 3D visuals and a dual screen setup offered by the portable system. Samus Returns received generally favorable reviews praising the gameplay and visuals. It also won multiple awards such as Best Mobile Game, Best Handheld Game, Best Spanish Game, and so on. After the success of Metroid Fusion in 2002, Yoshio Sakamoto had plans to make a sequel to the game that was headed to the Nintendo DS. That game was Metroid Dread. As said, he wanted to port it to the DS, but unfortunately, the technology was too limited to create the game that he envisioned. The title of the game came from the concept of having Samus followed by Dread on an unfamiliar planet. Sakamoto's inspiration was the tension surrounding the SAX for Metroid Fusion and how he wanted to take that style of gameplay and put it into what is considered to be the normal Metroid gameplay. Sakamoto did not want Dread to be a horror game, but did want to explore fear-based gameplay. The first attempt to develop the game was in 2005, while the second attempt was made three years later. A playable prototype was shown to Nintendo Software Technology and Nintendo of America staff at E3 2009. The project was reportedly not titled Metroid Dread at that point and had an art style similar to Metroid Fusion. The prototype did not meet Sakamoto's expectations, so development was halted. A major reason for this was that Sakamoto's desire for an intimidating, unsettling antagonist was difficult to achieve with the DS hardware. 
The title Metroid Dread first appeared on a 2005 internal Nintendo software list of key DS games set to be announced in the future, triggering expectation that it would appear at an E3 convention in 2005 or 2006. By late 2005, rumors spread that Metroid Dread had been cancelled or was in development hell. A release date of November 2006 was listed in February 2006 issue of official Nintendo magazine. The March issue listed a release date for 2006 with a suggestion to look to E3 2006 for further details, but the game did not appear. In 2010, Sakamoto said that Nintendo would start from scratch if they returned to the Dread project. He also said that they were waiting and watching and reading comments to see what people are interested in before we make any comment on the project. In other interviews, he denied that the Wii game, Metroid Other M, and the Nintendo 3DS game Samus Returns were connected to Dread. In May 2010, IGN's Craig Harris said that the story for Metroid Dread was complete and that Nintendo was able to bring it back at any time. After so many years of being in the dark and lack of trailers and announcements, Metroid Dread was finally announced at E3 2021 and finally released on October of that same year and released on the Nintendo Switch. The game was developed and published by the same companies behind Samus Returns. Set after the events of Metroid Fusion, players control Samus Aran as she investigates the source of a mysterious transmission on the planet ZDR. It retains the side-scrolling gameplay of previous 2D Metroid games and incorporates stealth elements. Metroid Dread is a 2D action-adventure game where players once again take control of Samus. She can aim freely and use melee attacks against enemies. Much like in previous titles, players explore areas to obtain new items, weapons, and power-ups necessary to explore further. Dread adds stealth elements with Samus avoiding EMMI robots in certain areas by hiding, reducing her noise, and using the Phantom Cloak, camouflage that makes her invisible but slows her movement. If an EMMI catches Samus, the player has two brief chances to perform melee counters and escape. If they fail, Samus is killed. EMMIs can only be destroyed when Samus obtains the temporary Omega Blaster upgrade, which is lost upon using it to destroy one. However, destroying an EMMI grants Samus a new permanent upgrade. Upgrades can also be found by finding Choso statues or destroying a Core X like in previous games. Players unlock images in an in game gallery based on their completion time, difficulty level, and percentage of items collected. Reviews for the game were positive and won an award for Best Action Adventure Game at the Game of the Year Awards. The game also was the fastest selling game in Japan, the UK, and the US. It has sold over 2.74 million copies, making it the best selling game in the series behind Metroid Prime. Metroid was a popular game series since the first game, but it was also in other media as well. Samus Aran would appear in the Captain N comics based on a cartoon of the same name. Nintendo Power would have a Super Metroid comic as well, which introduced a character titled Armstrong Houston, who was insistent in becoming Samus' partner, much to her annoyance at him. It also had a part which told Samus' origins, the Crystal Flash, seen in the game which heals her, the fight against Mother Brain, etc. Metroid had a prequel manga which told Samus' origins and depicted a much more emotional side of her. She's not only this badass bounty hunter who kicks so much ass, but seeing her emotional side makes her human. There were also plans on making a live-action movie and was planned to be released on 2006. The ones who obtained the rights for the Metroid movie at first were Warren Side and Craig Perry, who are the creators of American Pie and Final Destination. They later lost the rights to the film, which were taken later by John Woo, the director of Face Off and Mission Impossible. John Woo would later lose those rights, and the movie would end up in development hell. 
However, famous socialite and hotel heiress Paris Hilton auditioned for the role of Samus, which of course a lot of people were relieved when she didn't get the part. In terms of a live action Metroid films, others expressed interest for the role of the iconic character such as former women's UFC champion and WWE superstar Ronda Rousey and Academy Award winning actress Brie Larson. Larson is famous for her roles in Scott Pilgrim, Room, and Captain Marvel. Two fan-made films were made and were quite successful. The first fan film was Metroid The Sky Calls in which Samus was played by Jessica Chobod. Another successful fan film was Metroid Attack of Ridley and Samus was played by Ainsley Bircher. Samus Aran will make a cameo in Tetris Super Mario RPG and will also be playable character in the Smash Bros. series of games. The Metroid series, despite being on hiatus on several occasions, continues to be a beloved series. Samus continues to be an iconic female character that is tough, an ass kicker, and independent as well. She is also the most non-sexualized female video game character ever, a belief shared by Steve Rabin in Introduction to Game Development, which is considered Samus as one of Nintendo's most popular video game mascots. Thanks for watching, and until next time, gamers. This is John of Video Games in the World, signing off.